Number one. This happened a few nights ago. I am a 25 year old female, 115 pounds, and was out with my thoroughbred, Shane, doing fitness work on the cross country course. If you guys don't know what that is, imagine a huge area full of fields, ditches, woods, etc., with jumps placed strategically throughout, designed to test horse and rider stamina. We were getting ready to head in from an evening of hard work. It wasn't dark, but it was slowly getting there, prompting me to head in for the day. As we were walking around the area we had been working, my horse started refusing to go near a patch of woods. We had gone by it several times that evening, so I urged him forward to investigate. It was then that I heard what I believed to be a human voice. I realized somebody had been watching us the entire time. This property is on 700 acres, and this section was nowhere near a road, so this person had very intentionally made their way very close to where a rider could potentially be. I did not want to startle the horse, so I calmly turned him around and began a fast walk around that patch of woods, giving it a very wide berth, with intentions of heading straight the fuck back to the main barn. As I got to the middle of the field, however, Shane halted, and although by then it was almost dark, I realized something. There were people in the woods across the field in front of me too, which is where my safest exit was located. So now, I have somebody in the woods 50 yards or so behind me, and what sounded like multiple people in the woods 50 yards or so in front of me. I briefly considered taking the other exit route, but as I mentioned before, this was very far off the road. So, my immediate thought process was that they didn't walk there. Yeah, Shane and I couldn't beat them to the gate, but if they had a vehicle of some sort, they could have caught up as I was opening the gate. We stood there for about 30 seconds, and simultaneously came to the conclusion, if we go now, we will beat them. We basically bolted across the field, slowed up slightly to cross a ditch in the woods, the one they were trying to surprise block me at, and flew to the gate just beyond it. I jumped off, unlatched the gate, and didn't even stop to mount the horse. I just grabbed his reins, and together we bolted to the barn. Within 20 yards or so, we started to hear voices in the distance, and I started hollering. There's people out there at the entrance, guys. Come here. And as soon as I started making a fuss, a four-wheeler started up from just behind the gate and hauled us away. A police report was made, and the next day, there was evidence found of two four-wheelers, so that makes sense, since I was seeing people basically surrounding me. We aren't going to stop running out there, but the barn owners are taking some precautions, and we won't be out there alone or at night anymore for a while. They may have been just teenagers looking to scare a rider, but either way, not fucking cool. And the fact that they were trying to sneakily block my exit route... I can't imagine their intentions were pure. Thank God for my hypersensitive horse. Without him forcing me to pay attention, I may have never noticed the people, especially the ones in front of me moving in the woods that were trying to be quiet. Shane was a good boy that day. Number 2 This particular event happened to me about two years ago. I went to an anime convention in Atlanta with two of my friends. For the most part, it was a fun experience as we got to know several cosplayers and bought a lot of shit from the vendors, basic convention things. It was all good and well, until the last day of the convention. Throughout the entire day, I began to take notice of a small group of people while we were in the dealer room. Upon closer inspection, I realized each of them were wearing a specific type of mask. One guy was wearing a black leather jacket and one of those latex horse masks you see on the internet. The other one was wearing a pigeon mask and had a black hoodie and the last was wearing a crying baby mask with a white t-shirt. They weren't really bothering anybody. They were just hanging out and having fun like the rest of the congoers. So I pretty much dismissed it all together and continued on with my day. Cut to about 11 at night, my friends and I had just been invited to a private farewell party by a few friends we met at Con. Since the party was at a private hotel in the opposite direction ours was, 
My friends called a taxi while I decided to walk to our hotel and start packing up, seeing as we were leaving first thing tomorrow morning. Looking back, I probably should have gone with them. That way, none of this would have happened. To put things into perspective, the hotel we were staying in was a good few blocks away from the convention center, and being a person who isn't a fan of large cities, the thought of walking alone at night in the hugely populated city of Atlanta with the mentality that I would easily be mugged or shot was pretty fucking scary. Despite all this, I pressed on and began my walk to the hotel. About halfway through my walk, I began to hear footsteps behind me. At first, I brushed it off as another pedestrian until I realized that the footsteps are in exact unison with mine. When I stop walking, they stop as well. When I start, they do too. I'm starting to get paranoid at this point and begin to break into a light jog. Sure enough, guess who does too. Finally, I couldn't take it anymore and turn around, only to be greeted by the same masked group of people from before. They're pretty far away from me, but I could still make out the shapes of their masks. The second they noticed I saw them, they began to start slowly walking towards me. I start getting pretty freaked out and begin to walk even faster and turn a corner. I then breathe a sigh of relief as I see my hotel in distance, as indicated by its bright neon sign. Curiosity got the better of me and I peek the corner to see if they're still following me. Well... Not only are they still following me, they're also not walking anymore. They're fucking running. That was enough. I sprinted to the hotel, ran up the stairs to my floor, grabbed my keycard and noped into my room. But that's not where the story ends. Here I am in my hotel room freaking the fuck out at what just happened when I hear a sharp knock on the door. I know it's not my friend's, as I was already on the phone with them when it happened. I just sat there on my bed, scared out of my fucking mind, when I hear the knock again. Only this time, it has a slight metallic sound with it, like if you tapped a wooden door with a nickel. I muster up the courage and walk over to the peephole on the door. It's the same fucking masked people from before. They realized I was at the door and just began staring into the peephole. As I stood there, blood frozen and unable to move, they lift up their arms and wave at me. It's at this point I notice that Pigeon Head is holding something in his waving hand. He was holding a fucking knife. At that moment, I noped away from my door and was just about to call the police when I hear the sound of a loud bang against my door. They were trying to get in. I shouted to them that I was going to call the police but they just kept on slamming against the door. I then hear a loud voice shout the word, Hey! And the banging noise stops. I hear a group of footsteps running away, and recognize the voice as a police officer. It turns out that throughout the whole day, my friends noticed those three masked people follow us around everywhere we went, and once they saw them slowly trek behind me as I walked home, they called the police. There is nothing really left to say. We packed up, went back home, and tried to forget this whole thing. I don't know what became of those freaks, but sometimes I do wonder what would have become of me if I wasn't fast enough to escape them. Number 3 A few years ago, I was leaving my grad school office late, around 10pm, to catch the bus home. I walked from the university campus via relatively busy, well-lit streets to the main north-south road in my area of the city, 109th Street in Edmonton. I was waiting for the bus at a shelter as it was in the middle of winter, snowing and a bit cold. The buses ran about every 15 minutes, so I wasn't worried or nervous, just patiently waiting to get home. I was listening to my music with my headphones in when I noticed a guy walk up to the shelter. I looked up at him briefly, did that little Canadian half-smile of acknowledgement, and went back to listening to my music and reading Reddit. 
A few minutes passed and I could hear him start talking to me. Well, I assumed it was me. I was the only one around. I looked up and he was staring right at me, smiling a bit oddly and speaking to me. I took out my headphones and said, excuse me? He just kept smiling and blathering on, asking me about my day, the weather, what I like to do, etc. I don't know what it is about me, or perhaps people or women in general, but I am a perennial people pleaser. I don't like confrontation and my main aim in life seems to be to keep the peace. So I answered a few of his questions politely and as non-specifically as I could, with one earbud still in my ear. He just kept blathering on and on and I was sort of just nodding politely. This went on for about 10 minutes and I just had this sinking feeling in my stomach about this guy. Like something was just a little off, but enough to make me nervous. After about 10 minutes, I could see the bus rolling up, which was a huge relief for me. No one else had arrived at the bus stop, and I could see at least 10 to 15 people on the bus, which was great. I got on the bus and sat near the front, and the guy sat across from me so he could keep talking to me. I had originally intended to head to my own house, to the west of the street I was on, but after this guy decided to be my personal parrot, I decided screw it. I'm going to go to my boyfriend's instead, directly to the east of the street I was on. I was still getting an uncomfortable feeling from this guy, so I decided I would push the bus stop button to stop early and see what the guy did. The bus came to a stop at my request, and the guy got up. I didn't move. Isn't this your stop too? He asked me, and I said, Whoops, I must have hit the wrong stop. He looked at me and said, Oh, that's funny. I mixed it up too. This isn't my stop either. And sat back down. At this point, I'm pretty freaked out. I hit the bus stop for the next stop and texted my boyfriend to come and meet me at 109th Street. I got up to leave the bus once it stopped, and Creepy Dude followed. I crossed the road, and he followed, still talking away at me, still asking me questions. Once I got to the other side of the road, I told him that I had to go and that my boyfriend was meeting me. He looked irritated at the idea of my boyfriend and tried to walk with me a bit more, but I stopped and told him that I was walking on alone. Can I have your number? He asked. I panicked. I just froze. I decided to give him almost my phone number, just the last four digits scrambled. I read it off to him, said goodnight, and started walking away quickly. I had made it maybe twenty steps away, and I could hear someone jogging after me. Hey! He yelled after me. I think there was a mix-up. I tried calling the number, and it wasn't you. He jogged up level next to me and was still smiling that same fucking smile, staring at me. Oh, how weird, I said, grabbing my phone. I pretended to check it for a missed call and quickly texted my boyfriend that I was terrified and that he needed to get here. Now. So, what's your real number then? He asked. I honestly don't know what I would have done. I think I would have given him my real number. I just had no idea what to do. It was cold. It was winter. And it was dark in this little residential neighborhood I had entered. And I knew I couldn't outrun him. Luckily for me, that was when my boyfriend came running up. He's six foot three and somewhat imposing. And I turned to the guy and said, Have a good night and jogged up to my boyfriend and just launched myself at him. I didn't look back at the creepy dude, but I did tell my boyfriend to please make sure the doors were all locked, 
and the windows all closed before we went to bed that night. So creepy bus dude, let's not meet again. Number 4 My boyfriend of 5 years and I recently moved to Texas from Iowa, where both our families live, to a new subdivision outside of a small town. The house we bought is at the end of a cul-de-sac with a huge field, with nothing but trees behind it. We were both very excited to be starting our new lives together, and to have bought our first house. We also have two dogs, basically our children. My boyfriend decided he was going out with some new co-workers to the city, about 35 minutes away. I didn't feel like going, as I'm more of an introvert, and large crowds aren't my forte. Also, I usually like being home alone, because I can binge slack and watch scary movies he never wants to watch. So, after getting home around 6pm from work and the grocery store, I barricade myself and the dogs in my bedroom to commence the scary marathon of awesomeness. Side note, my dogs become on edge when my boyfriend isn't home at night and randomly bark in the night at seemingly nothing. It freaks me out a bit, but... I've become used to it. We have one window in our room that's right next to our bed. I usually have the windows open, letting the night air in. But tonight, I only cracked it. So, I'm balls deep in some cheesy 80s horror flick and the dogs start barking. I always take notice when they bark. However, just in case, I turn the lights on, look around. Nothing. Lights off. Back to the dits running up the stairs. It's around 11 now, and I'm sure the boyfriend will be gone a couple of more hours. No biggie. The dogs start barking again, and this time they don't stop. So, slowly, I look out the window. I don't see anything until I catch it. At the bottom of the window, peering up at me, are a set of eyes. Not the whole face, not even the nose, just the eyes. The window is pretty low to the ground, so this man was crouching down. I thought it was my boyfriend trying to scare me. We sometimes like to do that, but not to this extent. So, of course, I try to play it off like I'm scared. Calvin, you're dumb. Seriously, it's not funny. The staring continues. (sighs) Okay, really milking this fool. Hardy, haha, now stop, really, you're freaking the dogs out. Then, the eyes start slowly moving, still on the window, so I can't see the face, but they're moving across it. Sliding up it now, I can only see one eye until the man is standing up fully. Clearly too big to be my 5 foot 11 boyfriend. I freeze. I've always thought of myself as tough and from watching so many scary movies, able to deal with sketchy situations, until now. I literally didn't move and the dogs still bark. He just stares. I quickly fumble for my phone, finding my voice and yell at this psycho to leave and I'm calling the cops. That's when he takes a sidestep into full view of me, just stands there while I dial for the police stammering over my words. Then, I hear something tap the window. It's a large knife tapping on the window, and he must have gotten the reaction he wanted from me, because a slow, sadistic smile slides across his face. Knowing full well that the police are coming, he takes one large step backwards, and stood there for what felt like forever. Each step backwards is slow and deliberate, while maintaining the most bone-chilling smile until he reaches the fence, climbs over, still staring in my direction. I see him peek over the fence one last time before disappearing into the night. The cops never found him. Number 5 So... I live in a Swiss city with about 170,000 citizens, which is fairly big for Switzerland, though it may seem small to you. A couple of years ago, I was in the city in a well-known underpass that is well lit and not really deserted and also connected to the main square. 
I was with two female friends and one guy friend who's also the boyfriend of one of the girls. This was about three years ago, and so we were about 18 to 21 years old. We were sitting there, drinking some beer, and having fun until this guy came up to us. He was short, had curly dark hair, and looked North African to us. He first started to talk to all of us in English, and we just pretended that we didn't speak English, and kept talking to each other in Swiss German. But he was very resistant, and he kept on trying to sell us cocaine. It was obvious that he wasn't sober, but he still seemed reasonable to me. This isn't very unusual in Switzerland, but they usually leave after a few minutes because they realize that they won't make any money of us. But after he still didn't leave us alone after a few minutes, my friends told me to talk to him in English and tell him to leave us alone and that we didn't want to buy anything. Well, revealing that I did in fact speak English was a big mistake. He came up to me, got very close, and started trying to pull me up off the floor. My guy friend then got up and started to yell at him in English, and luckily the guy left. A few minutes later, we got up too and went to the biggest square that was located at the end of the underpass. At this square, there are stairs that lead up to the city's theatre, and we saw the same guy on top of the same stairs walking away from us towards a big church, which is located behind the theatre. We ended up going home shortly after, taking either the bike or the bus, and nothing else happened that night. The next morning, I opened the newspaper app, and saw an article about an incident from last night. At around 2.30am, a Moroccan man had approached two guys in their mid-twenties, and told them that he would give them a little bit of cocaine, in exchange for their smartphones and wallets. After they refused, he took out his knife, and stabbed one of the guys multiple times. I am 100% sure that this was the same guy that talked to us, but I'm guessing he took a line after he left us and then got really desperate for money. I don't know why he didn't try to harm us. Maybe he wasn't high enough, or there were too many of us. I don't know. Oh, and for the guy who got stabbed? Luckily, he survived. Hey guys, it's the Grim Reader here. I hope you enjoyed listening through that. If you did, please slap a like. And if you haven't already, why not subscribe to be notified of future uploads? If you have a story you want me to narrate, please send it to my email in the description box. Once again, thanks a lot for listening.